ni ni ddechrau dwi eisiau nodi ychydig o bwyntiau. Cynnel yr y cyfarfod llawn hwn ar ffurf hybrid, gyda geilodau yn y siambr y Senedd ac eraill yn ymuno drwy gyswllt fideo. Bydd yr holl aelodau sy'n cymryd rhan yn rhyfodion y Senedd, le bynnag y bond yn cael eu trin yn gyfartal heddiw. Mae pob cyfarfod llawn a gynnelu'r drwy gynadledd fideo ni nol a rheolau sefydlog Senedd Cymru yn gyfystyr y thrafodion y Senedd a ddibenion deddd Llywodraeth Cymru 2006. Bydd rhai o ddarpariaethau'r rheol sefydlog 34 yn gymwys ar gyfer cyfarfod llawn heddi r nodi ar yr agenda chi, a dwi eisiau goffa aelodau fod yr rheolau sefydlog sy'n ymwneud â threfn yn y cyfarfod llawn yn berthnasol i'r cyfarfod hyn, ac yr un mor berthnasol i'r aelodau sydd yn y siambr ac ydyn nhw i'r hynny sy'n ymuno drwy gyswllt fideo. Cwestiynau'r prif weinidog yw'r eitem gyntaf yr agenda ac mae'r cwestiwn cyntaf gan Michelle Brown. What plans does Welsh Government have to build back greener after the COVID-19 pandemic? I'd sorry, I thank the, the member for that question. Across the Welsh Government, we prepare for a green reconstruction post-COVID. The actions we are taking will generate a more sustainable and resilient future economy, tackle the climate emergency, and address the decline in biodiversity. Your friends of the PUC have said the canoe recovery looks to the environment. And the Future Generations Commissioner says we have a once in a lifetime. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle can, can I just stop you there? I think we might have missed the start of your supplementary question. If you can start again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your answer, First Minister. Your friends at the TUC have said that any recovery must protect the environment. And the Future Generations Commissioner says we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to come up with visionary ideas and transformative investment to address health, the economy, and the ongoing climate and nature crises for the sake of Wales' long-term future. She says we need a new definition of prosperity based on well-being and a fairer, greener way of living. So what's one of your imaginative ideas to build yet another road? The Red Route, a road that won't preserve nature and the environment as the TUC, the Future Generations Commissioner, and the Welsh people want, but will destroy it. You scrapped the M4 relief road because it would damage the environment in South Wales. So it's a shame for the people of North Wales that you don't care as much about us, but instead care more about lorry drivers who want to cross into and out of Ireland. Initially, you said it was chosen because it was the cheapest option, but the cost estimate has already risen by £20 million. We need every penny we have to be spent on recovery projects. When will, the, when, when will the government drop the red route and put the money towards projects that will help our recovery and do so in a way that does not destroy forever ancient woodland and farmland? Well, so is, uh, I have with me here, as members can see, the stakeholder briefing that was distributed to members and uh, others about the plans for development of the Flincher Corridor Scheme. Uh, in case the member hasn't had an opportunity to see that document, let me just uh, assure her that it makes it clear that the stage we are at with the Red Route is a preliminary design process, which will look at all the environmental and engineering issues raised during consultation in more detail. Uh, the preferred route will be developed further as a result of that consideration, including environmental traffic and economic appraisals. And as the stakeholder briefing makes clear, all of that will be designed to minimize the impact of the improvements, the very necessary improvements on local residents, the landscape, air quality and biodiversity. So uh, I don't dismiss for a moment the concerns that the member has raised, they're right and proper ones, but the process that we are embarked upon is designed exactly to explore with local people and with local stakeholders the issues the members the member raises and to resolve them in a way that takes account of those important matters. Marty Davis. 
Presiding officer, First Minister, obviously if we are to build back and build back greener, it's important that uh, businesses can survive the various stages of either regional or local lockdowns or even deep national lockdowns. What confidence can you give businesses that they will be there at the end of this, of this coronavirus outbreak, in particular that once we do suppress it now the second time of asking, there's not going to be a third lockdown in later in the winter, a fourth lockdown, which will have a massive impact on business and business confidence, as well as liquidity of those businesses to be there to build back better, build back greener? Well, sorry, the member makes two points there. Uh, he will welcome, I know, the announcement by my colleague Ken Skates of £60 million to help businesses specifically affected by the local health protection restrictions. Uh, and my colleague will be making a statement on the floor of the Senate later this afternoon. We'll be able to uh, explain more of the detail of that then. The second point that Andrew R.T. Davis makes is about events further uh, into the year. Uh, and there, what I want to say is this, is that that will depend, crucially, on the extent to which Welsh citizens continue to observe all the measures that will make a difference to further spikes in coronavirus in the future. So the government will do all the things that we can do, uh, the health service, local authorities, public health organisations, the police, all those uh, organisations that are working so hard to try and protect people and keep Wales safe will play our part. But in the end, coronavirus spreads when people meet together in circumstances that they shouldn't, uh, when they travel uh, unnecessarily, when they come into contact with others in ways that could be avoided, and the chances we have of avoiding further spikes and further local restrictions depends crucially on every one of us playing our part. Question Dai, Hewer Anka Davis. What discussions has the First Minister had with the UK Prime Minister regarding the UK Government's proposals for regional investment in Wales? Well, so as no discussions have been offered by the Prime Minister on this matter. We discuss our plans with other UK government ministers, but progress remains slow, despite only three months remaining until EU funding enters its final phase. Well, First Minister, I'm disappointed to find that no discussions has gone on at that uh, very top level of government, but I don't put it at your door whatsoever. In Wales, with our established reserve powers model of devolution and the spending priorities flowing from clear, legally constituted policy framework underpinned, underpinned by the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, we can argue in the Senate over the social and economic and environmental priorities of success and failures in an open and accountable and democratic way, and we do. But I have a worry, First Minister. In England, prior to the last general election, we now know that nine out of 10 of the top beneficiaries of increased education spend were conservative marginal seats in affluent areas. And the National Audit Office has revealed that some of the most deprived parts of England were left out of a 3.6 billion pound scheme to regenerate town centres. 61 of those towns were chosen by ministers led by Community Secretary Robert Jenrick. All but one were Tory held seats or targets. So First Minister, do you share my worries? that in the absence of clarity on the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, the absence of engagement by the Prime Minister and the absence of a UK policy framework, there is a clear and present danger that Mr Johnson may be persuaded by those with fewer <coughs> scruples of him and lack of understanding of devolution to view replacement EU funds as an opportunity for party political gerrymandering in Wales. Well, so if, uh, I think your Anthony Davis makes a very important point, and he does so, uh, with all the authority of someone who has chaired our regional investment steering group, who chairs the European Structural Funds Monitoring Committee and chairs our European Advisory Group. So the things that he says to the Senate uh, come with all the authority and the information that he has been able to draw together in those very important uh, jobs. Now, the plans for future investment in Wales that he has drawn up with those colleagues, uh, made in Wales arrangements, reflecting international best practice, meeting the specific needs of different sectors and parts of Wales with greater delegation of decision-making uh, to regions. 
That is an approach that has been endorsed, not simply by the Senate, but by the all party parliamentary group, uh, chaired by our colleague Stephen Kinnock at Westminster, the WLGA, Universities Wales, the FSA, the CBI, the WCBA, and independent think tanks like the Joseph Rountree Foundation. The danger is now that in pursuit of narrow sectional party political advantage, the UK government is engineering a position where they will take decisions away from the democratically elected Senate and put them in the hands of an unelected, as far as Wales is concerned, Secretary of State for Wales, and I'm afraid all the warnings that Hugh Aranka Davis has made this afternoon are very likely to turn out to be true unless we can stop those plans in their tracks and we will be working as hard as we can to achieve exactly that. Russell George. Uh, Josh Lowick. Um, First Minister, the OECD uh, report into the future of regional development and public investment uh, in Wales um, found that the labour market links between the communities of Mid Wales and South West Wales weren't uh, particularly very strong. Uh, that recommendation is uh, of no surprise to myself. Uh, the report proceeded to recommend that it would be beneficial to separate Mid Wales from uh, South West Wales to create four distinct economic regions as opposed uh, to the current three. I wonder what considerations you and the Welsh Government have given uh, to this particular recommendation and the other recommendations for a regional investment within the uh, OECD report. Uh, well, sorry, I thank uh, Russell George for that question. He draws attention to the very uh, important OECD report that we commissioned, part of uh, what, as I said earlier, our determination that regional economic development policy in Wales should be informed by international uh, best practice. Uh, the report is being considered by the groups chaired by Hugh uh, Eranka Davis, and that will inform uh, our thinking in the Welsh Government, and we will respond in full uh, to the OECD's recommendations. But the point I make more generally, uh, Llawydd, is this, is that the report gives us in this Senate, members here, the opportunity to bring all their experience and local knowledge to bear on the way that these decisions are made in Wales. The idea that these decisions should be taken away from us and men made by a person sitting behind a desk uh, in Whitehall will know very, very little about Mid Wales, South West Wales or any other parts that need to benefit from uh, our funding in future, I think poses a real danger to us and would mean that in future the sorts of questions that Russell George has very properly raised here this afternoon would no longer be part uh, of our considerations or our decision making. Question in our gun, Arwain Weir, played here. Arwain with Arwain the Kedward, where can break Paul Davis? Yeah. Uh, uh, First Minister, there's now been a series of important policy statements issued by Welsh Government ministers to the media instead of this chamber. Of course, it's vital that members are given the opportunity to respond to Welsh Government announcements on behalf of the people of Wales. Last week, you chose to make an announcement to the media that affected hundreds of thousands of people right across South Wales. You failed to answer questions on the timings of your statement. And this week, you've decided not to even turn up in person. First Minister, that disregard for Welsh democracy is unacceptable. Yeah. And will you now guarantee that any future decisions will firstly be made in this chamber so that in the spirit of openness and transparency, elected members will have the opportunity to appropriately scrutinise the Welsh Government? Absolutely. Well, Howard, you said in introducing this afternoon's session that every member of the Senate is equally able to participate, whether that is remotely or in person. So I will leave you to deal. Uh, with the remarks that the Leader of the Opposition made about where people choose to take part in these proceedings. I say to people in Wales all the time that they should avoid unnecessary journeys, and I believe that I'm equally able to answer questions in the way that we are doing now as I would be if I were in uh, the Chamber. It's entirely wrong for the Government to ask people in Wales to take action in one direction and then not to behave in the same way uh, ourselves. Uh, I think the member is quite wrong to suggest 
that somehow, because I'm answering questions in the way that I am, that that is not satisfactory. But that's a point for you, Chloe, I believe, rather than uh, for me. Uh, as to the other point, it's plainly nonsensical. Uh, I answer questions on the floor uh, of this assembly. I make statements on the floor of this assembly absolutely regularly, did so all the way through the recess when his government at Westminster wasn't available to answer a single question from any elected representative. And there's nothing at all that this government has to apologize for or answer for in being available and answerable to the Senate of Wales. Well, Llywydd, I'm not going to take any lectures off the First Minister, and I put it to you, First Minister, that you can turn up to your government offices in Cates Park, yeah. but you can't turn up to the heart of Welsh democracy, which is also your place of work. And when it comes to making statements outside this chamber, I'm afraid you've got a track record as a government, and more than two million people across Wales are now living under your government's restrictions. The very least that you can do is offer their elected representatives a chance to question you on your decision making, and that's why firstly making statements to this chamber is so important. Now there are some very real concerns about the impact of local lockdowns on people who are living alone and it's vital that the Welsh Government looks at the restrictions with a view to finding some way of allowing single person households to mix with another person. There has been little recognition of the serious impact that this could have on people's mental health, particularly given that so many single person households have already had to shield for most of this year. And I know you've said that you're concerned about those elderly people living on their own who at the moment are not able to mix with anybody else indoors. Therefore, can you tell us what you're doing about it? Because you're aware of the Scottish model, which allows a single person to form an extended household with one another. Knowing how desperately isolated some people across Wales must be feeling, uh, can you tell us why the Welsh Government hasn't already changed the regulations in relation to single person households? As I'm sure you'd agree, we have to offer these people hope. But well, I believe I'm at the heart of Welsh democracy now and I'm answering the member's question. So I continue to fail to see uh, what he thinks he has to complain about. As far as people who live in single person households, I think that is an important uh, issue. I've been discussing it with leaders of local authorities who are under local restrictions. I've been taking uh, interest in the Scottish uh, model of doing so. It is being considered as part of a 21 day review that we carry out here uh, in Wales. So in Wales, we have stuck throughout to the pattern of reviewing our regulations every three weeks. That consideration for single uh, adult households uh, is part of the current three week review, which was discussed by cabinet colleagues this morning. I'm hopeful that we will be able to complete the necessary regulations and the advice we need to take from the Chief Medical Officer and others in order to complete our consideration of it within the three-week review that culminates this week. First Minister, as more and more people across Wales are now living under stricter restrictions, it's absolutely essential that the Welsh Government's testing programme is as effective as possible and that capacity is being used. Now, last weekend, you told us that currently in Wales, we're operating around two to 3,000 tests a day from Welsh capacity, which is even significantly under the 9,000 tests a day target the Welsh Government initially promised. And yet a week earlier, you said that an additional 28,000 tests per week could be processed with further capacity available to manage outbreaks across Wales. First Minister, it's absolutely vital that the system is capable of responding to spikes in testing that arise from outbreaks, and yet you've made it clear that for Wales to reach its full capacity, it would be difficult on a day-to-day -day basis. Given that you've invested a further £32 million to speed up turnaround times for coronavirus test results, can you tell us what fundamental changes have been delivered to our laboratory services to increase their capacity and resilience? And what urgent steps are you taking to ensure all labs in Wales are open and working? And more generally, how confident are you that Wales has a testing system that is capable of supporting our people over the winter months? Uh, sorry, I think if a member wants to quote me, he should try to do so accurately. Uh, I said at the weekend that the testing numbers this week would be over 5,000 uh, and that it will rise to 8,000 within the Welsh uh, system very shortly. 
the real struggle we face in the Welsh system at the moment is the problems faced by the Lighthouse Labs for which his party uh, are responsible. Now, we've had an assurance from those Lighthouse Labs that they will be able to increase the service they provide to Wales from the 9,400 tests we currently have to 14,000 by the start of October and 19,000 by the start uh, of November. Uh, I hope very much that that will turn out to be true and that the Lighthouse Labs will be able to return to the level of service that they were providing to Wales some four weeks ago. But if you want to know where the struggle in Wales has been over recent weeks, it has been in the pressure that the Lighthouse Lab system has come under uh, and the difficulties that his government of Westminster has experienced in coping with those pressures and putting that system uh, back on track again. Many of us will be, have been uh, surprised and somewhat alarmed uh, at the scenes uh, from the top of Snowdon over the weekend, long queues of people attempting to reach uh, the summit with complete uh, disregard, it would appear, for the social distancing guidelines. But it raises a wider issue. Of course, many of, of these um, uh, will have been visitors, and there's nothing set out in the guide guidelines at the moment that stops someone from a uh, COVID hotspot elsewhere in the UK travelling to areas of Wales currently with low uh, community transmission. Why is it the case, First Minister, that you, can, you can't travel from Aberavan to Abergavenny, but you can travel from Manchester to Manetho? Uh, well, so I was going to begin by uh, agreeing with Adam Price that those were uh, alarming pictures. Uh, let me make a number of points in reply, however. Um, to begin with, it's really important that we've had lots of anxiety over the summer in holiday destinations about people travelling from elsewhere in the United Kingdom and the risk that that might pose to the spread of the virus in those areas. Uh, actually, the evidence has turned out to be much more positive uh, than that, and we don't have uh, examples uh, where the virus has got out of control in those holiday areas because it's been imported from elsewhere. So I think it's very important to be guided by the evidence and the evidence is that that hasn't caused difficulties. And I think that that is a tribute to two things. It is because people have heard our message about uh, Visit Wales safely, and it's a tribute to the efforts that have been made in those communities uh, to welcome people from elsewhere, which is so important to the local economy, while doing it in a way that does not cause a risk to public health. However, uh, I think the member makes an important point. Uh, in Wales, when we get a hotspot area, we ask people not to travel outside that area other than for certain narrowly specified purposes. Uh, and going on holiday is not one of them. I wrote to the Prime Minister yesterday, urging him to do the same in England. Uh, I don't think it is right for us to institute a set of border controls trying to prevent people from elsewhere visiting Wales. I think that would lead us into all sorts of uh, anomalous and difficult territory. But I do think that as we act to prevent people who live in hotspots in Wales from travelling to England and taking the risk of the virus with them, so the Prime Minister, in his capacity as the Prime Minister of England in this case, ought to do the same to prevent people from English hotspots from travelling elsewhere in England to Wales or other parts of the United Kingdom because of the risk that that undoubtedly poses. And I wrote to him yesterday asking him to do that, urging him to call a COBRA meeting for this week, as the First Minister of Scotland did at the weekend, and I look forward to a reply. Uh, First Minister, the, the summer has been an, an extremely anxious time for young people, as you know, as a consequence of the A-level debacle. Many were left not knowing uh, if they were going to university at all, let alone uh, which one. Having arrived on uh, campus uh, last week, the worry now will be whether they will be allowed to return home for Christmas. Students like Meg, a first-year law student from Brecon, uh, studying at Bath, um, need clarity. She says the message from the government uh, are clearly confusing and would definitely be uh, communicated better, particularly for students who have moved to a different country with different regulations. So can you ask these uh, specific questions? To what extent 
To what extent is education exempt uh, from rules allowing students to form new households? Can students um, studying and living in a restricted area in Wales but who live elsewhere uh, return home? Can students studying and living in areas where no restrictions apply travel home, even if home is within an area of local restric restrictions? And finally, can students studying in one locally restricted area travel to another locally restricted area if this means getting home? Uh, so it, the, the rules uh, governing young people in Wales are the same rules as govern everybody else. Uh, I am not prepared to single out young people for adverse treatment uh, in the way that is sometimes being uh, suggested. Uh, I agree with what Adam Price said in opening that second set of questions, uh, that young people have had a very difficult time during coronavirus, uh, and the Welsh Government, with a sector in Wales, is working very hard to make sure that even in these most difficult sets of circumstances, young people's welfare goes on being properly safeguarded, that their access to a high quality education uh, is preserved throughout uh, this term and that they are not treated uh, any differently to any other Welsh citizen. Uh, and the answers to uh, Adam Price's questions are that the rules that would apply to any person in Wales would apply to a young person who is studying uh, as well. And all of that is available to people who need to uh, have answers to those questions, both on the Welsh Government website, but also in the specific advice of the different higher education institutions are working hard to communicate to people who have arrived to study uh, at them. Uh, on the 4th of September, um, First Minister Sage warned that there was a significant risk uh, that higher education could amplify local and national transmission of COVID-19. The, the risk, they, they said, required national oversight. And, and once again, they identified testing as critically important. On July the 15th, you said today we can carry out 15,000 tests a day. On Sunday, you said 15,000 is not a sustainable day-to-day -day target. So as universities have been opening their doors, uh, the testing system is failing. And if the problem is the Lighthouse Lab Network, well, why did you buy into it and place your trust in the, in the way that you did? Now, the advice from SAGE um, at the beginning of the, this month was that a coordinated outbreak response strategy should urgently be put in place between government, HE institutions, and local public health teams. But it seems currently, First Minister, there is no clear plan to support students, no clear plan to support the higher education sector. Christmas is only 12 weeks away. When can we expect that plan? Uh, well, so that plan uh, exists. And he, the member is quite wrong to uh, just spray around uh, accusations that it doesn't exist when it very plainly does. And so very many people are working so hard to make sure that students in Wales are well looked after. He's quite wrong to say that the testing system uh, is failing uh, in Wales. We have over 100,000 students in Wales and about 100 of them uh, have been tested as uh, having a positive case of coronavirus. Uh, of our TTP system, 93% uh, of close contacts continue to be contacted, 94% of positive cases uh, reached 85% of those within 24 hours, 92% within 48 uh, hours. The system in Wales, and indeed the system in Scotland, is standing up to the testing time that we are going through. Uh, it's very much unlike what is happening elsewhere. As far as the Lighthouse Labs uh, are concerned, I was urged many times on the floor uh, of the uh, Senate to make sure that Wales took full advantage uh, of the capacity that it would provide uh, to us. It was right that we should uh, do that. And as I said, until a number of weeks ago, the system was serving Wales very well. We want to see that system restored. We want to see it back, providing the volume of tests and the timeliness of tests that we know Wales needs. Uh, I urge UK ministers to make sure that they do everything they can to put us in that position and then we will be very glad indeed again to be part of that system which is providing thousands of tests to Welsh people and is part of uh, the infrastructure that we will all be relying upon as we go further into the autumn and winter. Rwyneth played Brexit, Mark Reckless. 
Uh, First Minister, when you uh, put Cardiff into local lockdown and through the force of law required people to work from home if reasonably practicable, did you consider the potential impact of that on our proceedings in the Senate? Now, if you're correct when you say members are equally able to participate, whether remotely or in person, doesn't that imply that it is reasonably practicable for members to work from home? And if members take a a different view, given that is law, may they be receiving a knock on the door from South Wales Police? You said earlier that my colleague will be making a statement on the floor of the chamber later today. Can I infer from that that some ministers will be coming in person to the chamber, even if you will not yourself? And you haven't said whether you're speaking from a well-appointed hut at the rear of your garden or whether you're speaking from your office in Cate's Park. If you are speaking from your office, then presumably you've determined it's not reasonably practical to work from home. So why don't you come to the chamber? And overall, when you say people must work from home by law, if reasonably practicable, would you ask people to do as you say or to follow the example set by our presiding officer and the leader of the opposition? Uh, well, so I can assure the member that when the decision was taken to impose local restrictions in any part of Wales, then all aspects uh, of that decision are carefully uh, considered. It is for individual members to make a judgment about uh, how they re- stay within the law. Uh, It is reasonably practicable uh, for me to work from my office in Cate's Park because in order to be able to answer members' questions, uh, I need the support of staff in the Welsh Government uh, who help me to make sure that I am as well equipped as I can be to provide answers that members uh, have a right to expect. So it is reasonably practicable for me to work uh, from here and because I live uh, in Cardiff and need to cross no boundaries uh, to get here. Uh, Other members are bound by the regulations, just as every member of Welsh society in areas where local restrictions are in place. And I think people have an obligation to make sure uh, that they are um, carefully considering the legal goal position they are in. Uh, I'm on the floor of the Senate, uh, Llywydd. As you made uh, clear, Uh, Virtual or physical participation is identical. I'm on the floor of the Senate now answering questions. My colleague Ken Skates will answer questions remotely and he will be on the floor as well. So, First Minister, you say you're working from your office because it's reasonably practicable to do so. But isn't the law that you must work from home if it is reasonably practicable to, to do so? and given it's equally possible to participate remotely and physically, uh, would not that be the case? Yet you choose not to come to the chamber, just as you chose last week to make announcements not in the the chamber, but via the media. You say all these uh, uh, decisions and announcements and regulations that you keep on passing with great variety and regularity around coronavirus are carefully considered. On which note, could I ask whether your policy of making everyone leave pubs and restaurants at the same time is working to help us build herd immunity? Could I also ask what is happening in terms of our democracy and proposals chaired by a member of your, an official in your government to consider postponing the election and extending the term of this Welsh Parliament beyond five years. Wouldn't that be extraordinary, given the democratic norms that we have? In the United States, we see the first debate between the presidential contenders tonight. I know that Donald Trump wanted to delay the elections there, but that's been given very short shrift. Is it not the case that we need to vote in next May as required by law? And it would be quite wrong to extend our term further or to delay those elections as one constituent of mine said today, and I wonder if you could uh, answer this, if we can queue for the supermarket, surely we can queue to vote. 
so is the uh, regulations in place in Wales do not require people all to leave the pub at the same time. Uh, indeed, it was a very deliberate decision uh, not to do so. Uh, in England, everybody must be on the pavement at 10 o'clock at night, uh, whether they are halfway through a meal or just began uh, to, uh, to drink. They must be outside at 10 a.m., 10 p.m., and as you have seen in other places, that is clearly causing uh, difficulties of public order uh, and of public health. We decided to take exactly the opposite case here in Wales. People have time after 10 o'clock uh, to complete uh, what they are eating and drinking to leave in an orderly way spread out uh, over that period. Uh, exactly the opposite case uh, obtains in Wales, so the one suggested uh, in the question. Uh, so it, let me say I am very committed to having an election in May of next year. That is absolutely the right thing. That is what I think should happen. It is not right that the Senate should be extended beyond its current term. And that is, you know, I feel very strongly uh, that the Senate needs a democratic refresh and the opportunity for people in Wales to decide who they wish to represent them uh, in future should be in their hands and it should be in their hands in May of next year. All, the only point I put to the member uh, is this. None of us knows what the state of coronavirus will be at that time. Uh, and just as I want there to be an election, I want there to be an election where every Welsh citizen feels confident about being able to participate and is not put off from participation by fears that they may have about the risks that they would run to their health uh, if coronavirus will once again to be at a very, very difficult uh, pitch. So May is a very long way away and none of us are in a position to be able to look into that crystal ball. Uh, I share uh, the members' determination that we should vote in May of next year, but I simply put that one uh, point to him, that we want an election in which every Welsh citizen feels that they can go to the polling station and are not put off from doing so because the state of public health at the time might be very off-putting to them. And it's just foolish not to be willing to contemplate that and to think about how we would cope with it were we to be faced by it. Partneriaid perthnasol yng nglyn a phrofiata ymwelwyr yng Nghymru yn ugen 21. Diolch yn fawr, llywydd i Siangynllian am y cwestiwn, mae'r sector turistiaeth ac adfer phrofiadau ymwelwyr at y dyfodol yng Nghymru yn cael eu trafod mewn cyfarfodydd reolaidd o'r tasglu turistiaeth. Mae gwynidog a diffro gwynidog sydd â chyfrifoldebau dros turistiaeth yn mynechu'r cyfarfodydd hyn. Dan ni wedi creu sawi llawer mwy o ymwelwyr nag arfar i fannau twristaidd yn fetholaeth i eleni, maen nhw wedi dod â hwb, haf bach mi hangel i'r uh, economi leol, ond dydy'r profiad ar gyfer yr ymwelydd nag ar gyfer y boblogaeth leol ddim wedi bod yn bleseris ar bob achlysur. Problema parcio a theithio ciwia hir um, a nid yn unig ar gopar wyddfa, Problema sbwriel, mae rhain i gyd yn cael effaith negyddol ar brofiad yr ymwelydd a gwrs gwrs yn creu rhwystredigaeth mawr i'r boblogaeth leol. Ydych chi'n cytuno fod rhaid canfod ffyrdd i reoli gor dwristiaeth ac fod gan y llywodraeth rôl bwysig i'w chwara drwy dynnu'r holl barneriaid perthnasol at i gilydd er mwyn cynllunio ymlaen at dydymor llwyddiannus y flwyddyn nesaf. Uh, well, so it's just about Ishanga and Sienna. My question, I echo na Dwin uh, Dwin Katino Dahi. I'm a pet in Trial. I cadu de Gilid. My Dwidian tourist yet and hot poise young. An our Oglev Camry. An ac our Ateb ear a problem. I an de Bunny are Tani Bobble de Gilid. Rhwnd y bwrdd y gilydd ac feddwl am sut ni yn gallu rhoi profiadau arbennig o dda i bobl sy'n dod a atwn ni sy'n rhan o'r economi uh, lleol ac ar yr un uh, amser 
i gwarchod y pethau, mae pobl yn dod uh, i Gymru, i weld ac i fwynhau. Uh, a pan dwi'n siarad am pethau fel na uh, llawydd, allai just i ddweud geffais uh, yfraint uh, o Gymru dran nos di sil mewn seremoni i nodi garreg filltyr uh, diwedd araf, yn y daith i sicrhau status cafle tra, tra tadaith o byd, uh, diwydiant llechu angodledd or Lewin uh, Cymru, ac i croesawu uh, i uh, Gymru, Frau Frederic Hansel ac Eraill o UNESCO sy'n ei ymweld i'r ardal. Am oedd hwnna yn dangos, mae bobl ledled y byd yn eisiau dod uh, i weld i pethau sy'n dani uh, yma yng Nghymru, ond o peth pwysig yw i neidau mewn ffordd uh, sy'n warchod y pethau maen nhw'n eisiau uh, weld ac i tynnu i fewn pobl lleol, pobl yn y busnesau, na rownd y bwrdd gyda'r yr awdodadau uh, lleol y Llywodraeth uh, Cymreig i cynllunio dygilydd uh, am y dyfodol. Angela Burns. Good afternoon, First Minister. Please forgive me if I cut across anything you've already said. Unfortunately, your version of translation wasn't uh, working at my computer. Um, many of the visitor experiences in Carmarthen, West and South Pembrokeshire are provided by micro-tourism businesses, whether they are eco-tree lodges in the forests of Carmarthenshire or, you know, small campsites and businesses along the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park. And because they are very distinct and have a particular attraction to certain groups of people, they, of course, have been quite badly hurt by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I did listen very carefully to your reply to uh, Adam Price earlier about whether or not people should make a, a, a journey to see us. But of course, um, I want to just read something from Microtourism Wales, who go to say that um, our members are now dealing with confused guests looking to cancel or change their holidays because they do not understand the local lockdown policies. And yesterday, the economy minister during the Welsh government press conference said, and I quote, it is vital that people consider carefully whether their journeys are required. Um, microtourism businesses in my patch are already financially under the water because of the earlier lockdown. Are you able to give them any other guidance as to what they should say when someone phones them up from either England or a different part of Wales and says, I I'm going to cancel my two weeks in your tree house in Carmarthenshire because I don't think I'm allowed to travel? Or even worse, they ask them whether they should travel or not, which puts the onus of making that decision on the operator. Well, sorry, that I have tremendous sympathy uh, for the businesses that Angela Burns has highlighted. Uh, I was able myself to spend uh, a short uh, while in the holiday period in her constituency and could see just how hard uh, people who earn a living uh, through visitors were working to try and make up for the losses that they had sustained earlier uh, in the year. So the, the reoccurrence of coronavirus across the United Kingdom is inevitably very challenging uh, for them. Uh, we do our best to communicate as clearly as we can uh, through the different networks uh, that we have, uh, through the group that I mentioned in my uh, answer to Sean Gwentley and that meets every week. Uh, with the Welsh Government to make sure that through the regional tourist uh, arrangements we're conveying those messages. Uh, and today, uh, Ken Skate will uh, make a statement on the floor of the Senedd, which will include a £20 million ring-fenced budget for hospitality and tourism over and above the £27 million that the sector has been able to draw down uh, from the first two iterations of the Economic Recovery uh, Fund. So I hope that that will be of some help uh, to the businesses that Sean, that, um, pardon me, that Angela Burns has uh, highlighted. We were working hard with the sector to try to extend the season so that people would have been able to go on working for longer uh, and the difficulties that we are experiencing uh, as the virus takes hold once again uh, are a blow both to, their, to those plans uh, and to the hard-working people who have done so much to try to recoup something uh, from the season for the businesses that they have worked so hard to build up. Pedwar John Griffiths. 
Will the First Minister provide an update on COVID-19 restrictions in Newport? Uh, thanks, John Griffiths. Uh, so we're following a sharp increase in cases. Local restrictions were introduced in Newport on the 22nd of September. It is too early to make a definitive assessment, but the number of cases is starting to stabilise thanks to the efforts of local people. We monitor the situation daily and formally review local restrictions every week. First Minister, it is important for people to know that complying with restrictions to drive down cases will result in timely easing of those restrictions <clears throat> when it is safe to do so. So I hear what you say about some indications that um, matters are moving in the right direction. Um, but there is, is there anything more you can say about compliance and effectiveness of the local measures and what that might mean for the timing of the lifting of those measures? And where people in local restriction areas had pre-booked holidays which are effective, will you do all you can to ensure the travel industry acts responsibly and provides full and unconditional refunds? Uh, so, thank John Griffiths for those uh, points and, you know, happy to confirm that the daily figures that uh, I see and I'm advised uh, on by our public health colleagues have continued to show a small but sustained fall in the number of cases uh, in the Newport County Borough Council area. Uh, I spoke with the Chief Constable of Gwent Police twice last week and was encouraged by what she had to say about the level of compliance that is being seen in those local authorities subject to local restrictions. Uh, and she repeated a point made to me uh, earlier about Kerfili, uh, that people in, uh, in Newport want to do the right thing. They're not looking to find ways around the rules. Uh, they want to act within the spirit of the rules because they have understood that the more we do, the faster we will get on top of at local spike and the sooner we will be able to lift those uh, restrictions and I'm hugely grateful uh, both to the uh, citizens uh, of Newport but also to uh, local authority officers and the police service for everything they are doing to help people to do the right thing. We'll be reviewing restrictions on Thursday uh, of this week uh, and I will be discussing with my officials uh, how we might begin step by step to lift those local restrictions. I cannot promise at all that we will be able to begin on that journey on this Thursday, but I want to make sure we are planning for the route out of those local restrictions with local people, with local uh, agencies, so we can communicate that clearly uh, to people who live in those localities. As to uh, the second important point that John Griffiths raised about holiday arrangements, uh, he will know that the Minister for Health and Social Services wrote earlier uh, to the travel agent uh, industry. He wrote again on the 23rd of September. I'm pleased that we've received a reply from the Association of British Insurers uh, confirming that their members are committed to supporting their customers in the circumstances that John Griffiths uh, set out and that they are expecting to pay out £275 million pounds in cancellation claims. Uh, what we need to see are those uh, general sentiments, uh, encouraging sentiments, delivered on the ground uh, in the lives of people who have found their holidays disrupted. Question Pimp, Carwyn Jones. Forgive me, sir. With the First Minister, what support has the Welsh Government provided to businesses in Bridgend during the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, can I thank uh, Carolyn Jones? Uh, so with 474 micro and SME Bridgend businesses have been awarded funding through the Wales Only Economic Resilience Fund, totalling £88.1 million, with at least 2,500 jobs safeguarded up until the present time. We will continue to support businesses throughout Wales to stay viable through the pandemic and to respond to the inevitable challenges of Brexit. 
I thank the First Minister for that answer. Uh, businesses in Bridgend and across Wales, First Minister, will be uh, very pleased to hear the announcement this week from the Minister of Economy and Transport uh, with an extra £60 million of the funding for businesses across Wales as they continue to face the challenges of coronavirus. In terms of businesses in Bridgend and across Wales, how might they go about uh, accessing that funding and accessing uh, help? And uh, what sort of sums might they be reasonably expected to um, uh, to receive as a result of that uh, of those applications? Uh, well, so is uh, thank uh, Karen Jones for those supplementary questions. Is 140 million pounds altogether in this third phase uh, of the economic resilience fund? Uh, it will open uh, the eligibility checker for this uh, latest phase will open on the 5th of October. And of course, I hope that any business who, having seen the detail, think that they may be eligible uh, for help will uh, make uh, their way to that eligibility checker to make applications uh, as soon as they uh, are able to do so. Micro businesses will be able to apply for up to uh, £10,000. Uh, SMEs will be able to apply for up to £150,000 and large businesses will be able to apply for up to £200,000. Now, of course, there are, you know, there are um, conditions and rules that apply around all of that, but that gives, I hope, uh, an indication of the sort of scale of help that will be uh, available. Uh, and so, it, just to give a, another sense of how the scheme has been working, uh, I answered questions here uh, in the Senate earlier in the summer uh, about the £5 million fund that we launched at that time uh, to provide help for particularly small uh, businesses, sole traders and so on. Uh, and over £4 million of that £5 million has already been awarded. Uh, so I think that that demonstrates that we have a system in place uh, that is not only responsive to the needs of Welsh businesses, but is able to respond as quickly as we are able to get the money from us and into their hands so that they can go on being successful businesses into the future. Question, where Cloran Jones? Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government financial support for businesses affected by the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, thank the member for that, Lloyd. Our £1.7 billion pounds business support package is the most generous offer of help anywhere in the United Kingdom. As I've said uh, a number of times this afternoon, the Minister for Economy, Transport and North Wales will provide further details of phase three of the Economic Resilience Fund in an oral statement later this afternoon. Thank you, First Minister. Um, I welcome what you've done already and look forward to hearing what the Minister has to say this afternoon. Um, but I've been contacted by the owner of a small haulage firm working in the construction sector who needed financial support as building sites and quarries were closing during, uh, during, um, due to the pandemic. He applied for the first phase of funding from the Economic Resilience Fund shortly after it became available, only to find it had been withdrawn because of demand. He then contacted Business Wales, who advised him to seek funding through the self-employed scheme, which he did and received a small payment. When he applied for more funding from the ERF, he was refused because he had claimed from HMRC. My constituent said if he'd known this advice would make him ineligible for further ERF funding, he wouldn't have applied. Minister, are you aware of more cases like this? And do you agree me, with me that it's simply not right that this firm is now under threat due to advice received from business sales? Uh, so I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm afraid, familiar with the details of the specific uh, firm to which the member uh, refers, but I'm very willing to pursue the points that uh, she has made. If she would like to provide me with details uh, of the firm and the concerns that lie behind the question that she's raised on their behalf, uh, this afternoon, I, I will certainly make sure uh, that they are pursued. And, and I thank the member for what she said in opening uh, about uh, welcoming the help that we are able to provide to businesses uh, in Wales more generally. Ninth, Janet Finn Saunders. What plans does the Welsh Government have to tackle bovine TB in Wales? Yeah, yeah. Well, the Welsh Government continues to implement our TB eradication programme, aiming to address all sources of infection in cattle. New herd incidence last year was the lowest for 15 years, with a 16% decline in incidence in the 12 months to June 2020. Thank you, First Minister. Now, in the 12 months to June 2020, 10,000 
823 cattle were slaughtered due to bovine TB. Now, yes, I agree that is a 12% decrease on the previous 12 months. However, I was shocked to hear in the CCERA committee the minister describe this as uh, the latest statistics are good. Well, they are not good if you speak to the farmers across Wales. In fact, they are scandalous, especially as there has been a 56% increase in herd, new herd incidents in the low-risk areas of Wales. During the last three years, whilst 33,512 cattle have been slaughtered, only 16 licences have been issued to capture, mark and eradicate badgers to prevent the spread of this horrendous disease. First Minister, do you consider the latest statistics as being good? And what more are you doing to minimise the spread of bovine TB amongst our wildlife? Deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I think we have to uh, encourage people in the sector uh, who work so hard uh, when we see a 24 consecutive month decrease in new herd uh, incidents, uh, when we see uh, that number being the lowest for 15 uh, years, and in the first quarter of this year, uh, the lowest in any quarter since figures began to be collected. So it's important we encourage those people in the sector who are doing everything they can, uh, including farmers, of course, to deal with this dreadful uh, disease uh, by demonstrating that the actions they are taking are having a positive uh, impact. And that is exactly what the minister was trying to do. TB is a dreadful disease uh, in cattle and its impact on those uh, for farms who've had to see whole herds uh, slaughtered is devastating uh, on people who've invested so much uh, in those herds over so many years. The only way of tackling it is by tackling it on every front, through accurate testing, through high biosecurity standards, through individual herd action plans, and investing in the science as we do at the TB Centre of Excellence at Aberystwyth. Uh, and those are actions that every part of the sector has to take some responsibility for implementing. Uh, the member men, uh, said in her supplementary question to me that it was scandalous at the number of new cases that we are seeing in low TB uh, areas. But she will know that 82% of new cases in those low areas are traced to cattle that are bought and brought in to those areas, bringing TB with them. Uh, that's why high biosecurity standards, accurate testing, and the other measures that I have mentioned all have their part to play. And in that way, we will succeed together in eliminating this dreadful disease from Wales. I can all our question, Oith Darren Miller. Will the First Minister make a statement on road safety in North Wales? Uh, so I'd, uh, thank Darren Miller for that. Road safety remains a key concern for the Welsh Government. The Minister for Economy, Transport and North Wales has overseen a review of safety issues on trunk roads. And at the other end of the spectrum, the deputy minister in that department is taking forward initiatives such as the rollout of 20 mile an hour speed limits, which by themselves will have an impact on road safety in North Wales and in other parts of Wales too. Thank you for that answer, uh, First Minister. One of the consequences of the increase in people working from home is that we've seen a significant reduction uh, in traffic on many of our roads. Um, and unfortunately, because there's less traffic, uh, that has often led to an increase uh, in speeding. And that is absolutely true on the A494 trunk road between Rithin uh, and Mould, uh, much of which uh, is in my uh, constituency. Uh, we've had a number of serious accidents, unfortunately, um, some in which individuals have lost their lives uh, in the Llanbedda uh, area, and also in the Llanveris uh, area, there's been a, a significant increase uh, in speeding. Can I urge uh, you, First Minister, to work with the uh, Minister responsible for uh, transport to look at what additional measures might be taken on this particular uh, stretch of road, including whether it may be viable to introduce average speed 
uh, cameras, which seem to have been so effective in killing speed rather than people uh, on dangerous roads elsewhere in the country. Uh, so can I thank Darren Miller for those very uh, important follow-up questions. Uh, fatalities in North Wales in September have been very distressing, uh, and I know that he's been directly concerned with uh, some of them. So um, I wanted to thank him for the letter that he sent in to the Minister at the end of August, and I know he's received uh, a reply from Ken Skate specifically regarding road safety on the A494, measures that the Welsh Government has uh, already uh, taken and which need to be monitored now uh, for their effectiveness, but to give him an assurance, as the letter did, uh, that if those measures are not effective, then other measures will be considered of the sort that he uh, has set out, so that we can do everything we can together to make sure that lives and young lives uh, are not lost on roads in North Wales. Uh, and uh, before we move on, just to say that I've been asked uh, for a point of order at this uh, point by members, but I'll address uh, the issue in, in this way. Uh, firstly, all members, ministers and other members are fully participating equally in this Senate, whether they do so virtually or here physically in the chamber. Um, and secondly, to reassure members uh, here uh, present this afternoon that uh, you do so in uh, line with uh, regulations and uh, guidance. And now, uh, for the rest of uh, this lengthy afternoon and evening of, uh, of work that we have in front of us, let's uh, focus on the content of what we have to say rather than where we may be saying it uh, from. Uh, the next item is the uh, business statement. I call on the Trevenith to make uh, the business statement.